Hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Asian Dating Podcast. Today, I have a very special guest, good friend, Kat Contrell, dating coach and matchmaker. She's a professional matchmaker, an international dating coach, CEO, and founder of The Heart Agency. The Heart Agency is a matchmaking service that helps professionals find their forever match. Services include matchmaking, date coaching, workshops, mixers, and speed dating events. You can also tune into her podcast called Dear Matchmaker, where she gives tools and tips to help navigate your dating life and help you fall back in love with dating again. Welcome to the show, Kat. Oh, How are you? May. I'm so good. How are you? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah. nice to have you. Um, a little bit of background. I met Kat at our Cancun trip where the matchmakers just met. There's like 65 to 80 of us. And yeah. we met for this incredible weekend of coaching, training, a beautiful conference, meeting tons of matchmakers. And we also had a lot of downtime. So we had a lot of downtime with some of the matchmakers spouses and we just got to know everybody there and Kat was one of the people that I met there and it was yeah. just a great time wasn't it I mean was that your it first, was um your first conference yes it was my first conference and I uh so I don't know I don't know if you I'm sure I maybe you do remember this but so with the alliance uh, we hop on calls every month and you were one of the very first matchmakers that actually reached out to me when I was new to the Alliance. And so, uh, I, um, I've always admired you may and have loved kind of, I mean, you give such great advice. And, uh, so when you asked me to come on the show, I was like, yeah, of course it's like a no brainer. But then when I actually got to meet you in real life at the, at Cancun, in Cancun, I was just like, oh my gosh, she's like a real person. So, uh, it was so, yeah, I think that there's something to be said about when, you know, you can gather so much information with somebody when it comes to virtually and through zoom. But I think it really does take that when you do do that extra step in meeting someone in real life, it does kind of like solidify, like it just solidifies like everything that you thought about that person. It's just so great to actually connect with them in real life. So yeah. I'm so excited to be here and I, I loved, loved the conference. It was, uh, to me, it wasn't just, I don't know if maybe you felt this way too, but it wasn't just that I learned a lot more about what different people are doing in this industry, which I love the fact that matchmakers, we all come together and we share this information with one another, but it was validation too, where it's like, oh, I'm already doing these things in my business. Like this makes me feel really good because I'm already these are things and steps that I'm already doing with my clients. Did you feel that way too? Right. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the conference just, it's a good reminder of some things that you should be doing anyway. And yeah. also new tips, right? It's also right. information for us. I mean, even me being in the industry for 14 years, I'm still learning new stuff every day. And I love learning. I mean, that's the great part about it. I just love absorbing all this new information and applying to my own business and helping other matchmakers out there like you or the other Asia matchmakers that I'm training. So there's always something out there for us to learn, no matter if you're a veteran or you're brand new to the industry. Right. So yeah, it's just a great, great place to be. And hopefully we'll get to go every year. But what was funny was when yes. you said, yeah, I got to meet you on Zoom and stuff. And then we met in person and you're like a real person. And that's kind of like dating, right? Like you look it at is. profiles and then you're on this date and you're like, wow, this person is really everything I thought he or she to be, or gosh, they really are so different than what I thought they would be. So, I mean, I guess that kind of segues into our talk today about dating and, you know, all things dating, uh, all topics we could talk about, nothing is um, forbidden here. But I just wanted to get you on the show to kind of pick your brain and yeah. help out some of yeah. the Asian men and women out there who are kind of shy. I get um, some shy people yes. coming to me and they're like, well, I really want to date, but 
you know, how do I go about it? Like, what are some, some tips you can give them that can help them with navigating through the dating world if they're a shyer person and not such an extrovert, you know, yeah. Extrovert. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I have a couple, well, I have a couple of different thoughts that come to my mind. Cause I think, I think shy people, uh, they get, I think they get a bad rap. I think that when someone says, oh, I'm shy, it's almost as if they it's, it's like connection is not, it's so much more difficult for them. And when it, for me, when someone is shy, there's a couple of different pieces of advice that I always give to shy people because it, it's sometimes being shy may stem from lack of confidence. So being confident within yourself, being confident with who you are and how you show up to that date, or if you're shy, there's, it could also be just a part of your personality and a part of who you are. So when I am guiding somebody who's shy and they're getting ready for their first date, there's a couple of different things that I always tell them. So the first thing is, is that understand that you're both extremely nervous. So you're both on the same page, no matter if you're introverted, extroverted, outgoing, shy, I don't think it really matters. You're both showing up extremely nervous, wondering what the other person's going to be like, is the other person going to like you? So just already kind of disarming yourself in that way and just saying, okay, I know they're nervous. I know that I'm nervous. And so just understanding that you're both on the same level, playing level field when you show up. The second word of advice that I always tell people is to show up to a date in something that makes you feel wonderful. Maybe it's a special fragrance that you wear, a special piece of jewelry, something that's going to give you that special, it's what I call zhuzh. Have you ever heard the expression zhuzh? Yeah. 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 It's <laughs> like adding just that little extra zhuzh to help you kind of help your mindset and kind of build your confidence enough as you're walking into the state to hopefully ease the nerves because you, you feel like you're showing up looking good and feeling good and smelling good. Cause I mean, who doesn't love, who doesn't love that? And then the third thing that I um, advise my shy clients is to go ahead and say you're shy. It's okay to tell the person that you're shy because when you already tell them, you're like, okay, this is like, this is the first time for me. I've never experienced anything like this before. Just to go ahead and give yourself grace and go ahead and say that to the other person, it's going to help them understand more about you. And so if you don't disclose that you're shy and let's just say, you have a really difficult time being able to come out of your shell enough to where you're able to like volley the conversation, right? So we always, I mean, to me, when we have a conversation on a first date, it's like a volleyball tournament. And like you're throwing the volleyball and then they throw it back and you throw it back because when you're on a first date, it's, it's always important to be interesting, but it's more important to be interested. So even though you think to yourself, you have to fill in this space with words Sometimes the best thing that you can do is just listen. And for those that are shy, you already have a leg up from the other person like myself, who's extremely extroverted, where I have to go, oh, okay, cat, it's time to shut. <laughs> it's time to close, you know, let's take a step back and let's go ahead and ask questions and, and listen and just listen intently. And I think by doing those four different things, being able to express that I'm shy. I've never done something like this before. That way the person already knows, okay, this is why this person's behaving this way. But also just knowing too, that the date is not all about being able to talk about how wonderful you are. That sometimes the true to the key to true connection is just being interested in what the other person is saying. I agree. And yeah. it's also okay to tell them, gosh, I'm a little nervous. Like, yes. Wow. You're so beautiful. Or you, wow. You're so handsome. You're making me nervous or kind of give them a compliment, but at the same time, tell them how you're really feeling. And it's okay to do that because if someone says, gosh, I'm really nervous. Your first response is usually, oh, don't be nervous. Like, let me do everything I can to make you feel comfortable. So right. your date would most likely be like, oh, don't be nervous. I'll, I don't bite. I don't, I won't right. be nervous. So, I mean, you could kind of uh, give a compliment and then say you're nervous because of how amazing they are or gosh, I'm, 
really excited about this date. That's why I was so nervous, you know, or something like that's flattering to anybody. Right. So, right. Yeah. And it disarms, it disarms the whole conversation where you can both have a conversation about how you're both nervous. Right. Or you can have a conversation to where you can talk about, oh gosh, this is why I'm so nervous. Or you, to me, it automatically, it starts the conversation on the date by just saying, by showing up and just telling them how you're feeling. Yeah. And I think it's okay to do that too. And I think there's misconceptions and really poor, bad dating advice that's out there. That's like, don't tell them how you feel. <laughs> don't be, uh, don't be transparent. But I think that there's a difference between being able to express how you feel and like to a point to where you're like oversharing on a date. Like there is, there is a fine line between the two, but I think you, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I think by saying that you're nervous, I think could, could be extremely flattering to the other person because either that, or it gives them also the permission to go, I'm nervous too. And for them right. to admit, admit the same thing. Yeah. Do you think it's a turn off? for somebody who's doing online dating and they see profiles of women out there or men out there that say they are shy or that say they're introverts, is that something that they shouldn't put on their dating profiles? What do you think about that? I don't, I don't think that's a turnoff. I think that that if it's something that you, cause it, well, here's the thing. This is, if I was, if someone came to me and said, Kat, I want you to help me write my profile. And we went to go write their profile and they said, okay, I need to put on my profile that I'm shy and that I'm introverted. I might push back and ask them, what does that mean? Because sometimes our identity and the words that we use to describe ourselves are not our own. Sometimes the words that we use that, especially to go to describe ourselves are words that other people have used to describe us to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So like, I'll give you an example. I remember, so I do a live dating game show here in my community and I was doing interviews for it. And I had a gentleman who was on my dating game show both times. So on a live dating game show in front of a live audience, you know, over 300 people, when he went to interview the second time, he sat there and said that he was, he said that he was shy. And I was like, now, wait a minute. Like you've been in front on a stage in front of how many people, like, I don't think you're shy. Like I've met you several times and we've had some credible conversations so I think it can be a disservice when you do mention it on your profile, because maybe that's not the actual word that go, that describes your personality. It might be something that someone else has used to describe you because of their own interpretation and what their own meaning is of shy. So to me, instead of writing that you're shy, write other things that may, maybe that allude to the fact that you might be shy, but to maybe omit that to omit that being able to describe your personality, but to describe other th parts of you because one person's description of shy and another person's description of shy might be completely different. Yeah, I agree. I am not a fan of uh, when people put that they're shy or introvert on their profiles. Yeah. I rather they just say, I'm not the life of the party. Yes, exactly. That's my point. I'm shy. Yep. Yeah. It's like, yes, that's almost like a negative thing because, um, they're afraid that they're going to get somebody who's totally clams up and doesn't talk at all. And it's going to be hard to right. have a conversation with them or hard to draw things out of them. So I get profiles that say they're shy or introverts and I edit it a different way to make it sound a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I mean, they are not the life of the party, but I don't think they have to say that they're shy or an introvert. Um, anyway, that was just my thought. I didn't know what your thoughts were. Oh um, yeah. No, I agree with you because yeah. you bring up a really good point, May, which is when we, when we create our online profile, we want to use words that are going to describe us in our, at our best. Mm -hmm. We don't want to use words to describe us that are going to put us in a way to where we're putting ourselves down. And sometimes 
especially those are that are shy. They don't use the word shy or introvert as if, well, I don't know. Introverts are probably a little bit different. They, some of them are extremely proud of themselves that they're introverts, <laughs> but for the most part, like when people go to use to describe shy, it's, it's usually in a negative way. It's right. not a positive. And so the goal of your profile is to highlight you in the best way possible and using the words as introvert or shy is not doing that. Right. Right. Yeah. I agree. Um, speaking of profiles. Yeah. I've been reading a lot of profiles that come to me that are so generic when the women would say, I love hiking. I mm. like trying new things. I'm adventurous. I, uh, what would they say? I'm looking for a partner in crime. I mean, all those words are so overused on online dating profiles. What is your advice for them to spice up their online dating profile if they are those things that I just said? Like, how can you give the listeners out there ideas on how to add some pizzazz into their uh, profiles? Yeah, so I'm I'm really lucky. So my fiance, Brian is a copywriter. And so when we have clients, we, he actually does the writing for me. So I provide him with the information and he does the writing, but there's a reason for that because Brian is an excellent storyteller with words. Mm -hmm. And to me, using your profile in a way to showcase you and your personality by telling a story, we don't want to just say, we don't want to just minimize who we are as an individual based off of certain activities that we do. The one that drives me crazy may is travel. Everyone loves travel. I don't right. care. I mean, everyone loves travel. You're not unique and different. Right. So to me, it's finding those key parts of you that are so unique and so different that will make you stand out among the others. It's just like finding those, like, it's just like, you want to make sure that your profile is a true representation of the picture that you're presenting. Like what, what was your childhood dream? What is the most craziest memory you have? What is your most embarrassing story? Like things that you can think about who you are as an individual, not in, in your activities. I mean, those are important too, but you don't even have to have shared activities with somebody in order to have compatibility. To me, it's what are the things that make you unique and make you special that we can tell a story about who you are on your profile so that, and this goes with pictures too, so that when you look at yourself from, so when someone looks at you from the outside in and says, that life, she seems like a lot of fun, or he seems to be a lot of fun. I would love to kind of picture myself of what it would be like to be a part of their world. Like you want to, this is like in the business world, this is branding. Like what is your brand? Like, what do you, I mean, we talk about this all the time in the business world, right? Like, what is your brand? What do you stand for? What are your values? That kind of thing. So what is your brand? Like what, who are you? Right. You're not just a person who likes to hike and travel and walk your dog. Like, what are the stories? Like, what are the quirks about you? Like, what are the things that make you stand out among the rest? So if they say they like hiking, should they just say my favorite hiking spot is so-and-so where I can hike, you know, seven to eight miles on a beautiful Saturday morning. And then after the hike, I would love to go to a coffee shop with my friend or whoever I'm with. And we just have the best breakfast. I know this place that has the best French toast and hash browns and yes. bacon and fresh squeezed orange juice like almost like when you tell the story of your profile you have to kind of paint a picture of what it's like to hang out with you on a Saturday that's night, right right that's I mean, right yes so little things like that um I feel like because we date so often now that the daters out there are just kind of lazy when they write their profiles it just oh yeah. I see so many copy and paste stuff that they copy and paste from like match.com and then they paste it onto my profiles. I'm like, wow, if you're not going to take the time and share with me some of these unique things about you, why am I going to take the time to do a search and find you a person? Like, I just feel like they're not even putting the time into a profile sometimes. Like that's like so disappointing. Like 
this is what you think of your love life. Like you just met a matchmaker who says you could be in my database for free lady and I will do a search for you. And yet they're just cutting and pasting or barely answering the questions. I'm like, yeah, is this, is this how you want to uh, find your person? Like just putting half ass uh, time into it. I guess right? you get what you pay for, right? You get what you put into something. So that's a hundred percent. You're that's absolutely right. That you get what you put in. Yeah. So if you are dating, if you're dating with intent and you're creating that profile, and if you're not taking those extra steps to create it, to be this, it's to be a true representation of who you are, then the kind of matches that you're going to get are going to be a representation of the effort that you put into it. It's just, yeah. it's just the way it is. If you're wanting to attract a higher caliber of person, and I hate to say that because I feel, I feel it's so overused, but when I say that term, people know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're trying to attract that higher caliber person into your life, they're going to, that type of person is going to acknowledge and recognize the effort that you're going to put into your profile. They're not going to spend the time to because they're probably, they're also dating with intent, wanting to find connection. And excuse me. So they're not going to want to spend any time on someone who's not willing to put forth the effort. Because when you put a lot of time and effort in your profile and you're swiping, you're also going to be looking for people who also have put time in their profile. Because when we put time and investment into something, we value it so much more than we do with other things. So if you have put forth that effort, most likely you're going to swipe more mindfully and you're going to find better connection because you're going to look at profiles differently because of the way you've set your own, your, yours, the way that you set your own profile up. So I think that people do have dating fatigue. It's a real deal. Like it's a real thing. And I know that they're tired of trying all of the things. To me, it's just trying to like, sit with yourself and being like, what is it that I truly want and being able to be able to put forth that effort? Because it is hard putting yourself out there, but the UPS guy showing up your door is not going to be your forever person. Like part of dating, that's the hard part. I mean, I don't know, maybe in my, maybe it does happen on occasion. I have no idea, but the hardest part about dating is the vulnerability and putting yourself out there. And if you don't, if you're not even willing to take that step and to care, then you probably shouldn't even be dating. So when you say put yourself out there, what do you mean? Like yeah. how many times a week should someone put themselves out there? And where are these people going to be meeting other people? Where would you go if you were single today? Mm -hmm. And how many mm -hmm. days a week would you try to get out there and be social or go out on a date? I think it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. I think that it, if you are, because there's some people that, that cannot multitask. So there are some people that are like, I can't. So I know in the matchmaking world, like, especially men, men are like, I don't, I cannot online date and, and work with a matchmaker. Like I cannot do both at the same time. And then women are like, no, I could totally do both at the same time. I could do this. I can do this. I can do this. So I think it depends on the person. When I say about putting yourself out there, what I mean is being open to connection. So that could mean, so when I say put yourself out there, it doesn't necessarily mean just hiring a matchmaker or creating an online dating profile. Those are ways to put yourself out there. I think for me, it's as you are romancing yourself and creating romance for yourself, you are putting yourself out there open to connection with other people. And this is how I always help my clients, my dating clients, is that let's find some activities in the area, some things that for you to do, not with the mission of being like, I better walk into this thing and I better walk out with a husband. Okay. Because when you put out that energy, guess what? You might walk out with somebody. It might not be the right buddy, <laughs> but you could walk out with somebody versus when you go into an event 
something that's going to bring you joy, whatever that looks like. It could be a cooking class. It could be a cocktail making class. It can be bowling. It could be pickleball. Is that pickleball? Did I say that right? Yeah. Is that what it's called? I just noticed that there's, this is a tangent. I just noticed that there's a pickleball place that just opened here. I was like, oh my gosh, this, this thing is, is going crazy. And those there's leagues that are going right. Like there's pool leagues, there's dart leagues, there's bowling leagues, there's, um, volunteering at the local shelters. There's so like, instead of going with the mindset of being like, I'm going to join this thing or do this thing so I can find someone it's, I'm going to find things for me to do that are going to bring me joy. And in those, in the, in, in those situations, I'm going to open myself up for connection, no matter what that looks like. And when you have that mindset and you're putting forth that energy of just being like, I'm just open to connect. That's when, that's when the magic happens, because not only are you creating more romance and fulfillment for yourself, but you're also making connections with other people. And it's just like, it's just like networking, like we don't do networking. I don't know. Do you do any networking, May, at all in your not area? Not in person anymore. Yeah. I mean, just, yeah, not like I used it's to. It's so hard. Right. But like networking, when I walk as a matchmaker, I don't walk into a networking event and being like, well, pff, that's a waste of time. No one here is single, right? I don't do that. I walk into a networking event because I'm going to meet people who are going to potentially know people who could use my services. Same thing when you're out there as a single person looking to connect, you do not have to go to the bars, just do things for you that are going to bring you joy. You're going to meet new people. Are those people going to be a romantic interest? Maybe, maybe not. And if they're not, they might know someone who's single. They might know like a singles group that you would have never thought of, or would have never known. They might know that extra group or thing or activity that you could do that you might get invited along and then that you might meet somebody. So it's, it's opening yourself up for opportunity. I, um, can I, I have a quick story about that. Can I share that real quick? Can yes, I share it real absolutely. quick? I get, I get on these like great. I'm, you could tell I'm extremely passionate about what I do. Cause I get in these tangents. I am not shy. I am not shy. Um, so I, when I was single, I was a single mom. My kids went away for the weekend. And I didn't want to go home. I wanted to do something fun and exciting for myself, but I was like, what do I do? So there is a local casino here. I do not gamble, but I knew that I could go to the casino and I could stay at the hotel there. So I could drink at the casino and I could just stay at the hotel. And I knew they were going to have live entertainment. And I knew guaranteed the people watching was going to be par none. I knew that I was going to be able to sit there and have a cocktail and people watch. It's one of my favorite things to do. And that night, just by being open to connection, like, and people are like, what are you doing? Cause I was a single woman. They're like, what are you doing? Where's your boyfriend? Where's your husband? Like, what are, what are, what are you doing here? Where are your girlfriends? I'm like, I'm just out. Like, I'm just out. Like you are. I had the most fun that night. There was a dental convention that was going on. Had no idea. So I did this whole role play that night where I let people believe that I was a dental hygienist. <laughs> Nobody do. <laughs> and I ended up hanging out with dentists all night. Like who would have thought? And then I, you know, went to, I went to bed and I got up in the morning and I had this incredible experience. And if I didn't, I did not go to the casino thinking I was going to find somebody. I went to the casino because I'm like, I get to drink. I get to listen to live music. I get to people watch. It's safe. The hotel's right there. And I had the most incredible, I mean, I didn't meet anybody, but for, for me, just feeling that self, feeling that joy for myself, just like it, it just helps build your confidence and it just changes your perspective on connection. I love it. I love it. So are you suggesting that we should flip over the newspapers and see what kind of conventions are coming in town and yes! to bar and just meet people and have fun? Yes, you never absolutely. Know, right? <laughs> you don't know. You don't know. And I think, you know, it's, it's, we have, we're so driven by agendas now. Checklists, agendas, has to fit into this box, has to do this thing. And versus like, being in the moment, 
being open, letting go of your own like insecurities of whatever it is that you're carrying around and just being open to the possibility of what could happen. That's the romantic and the magic in it all. I mean, like when you walk into that first date, part of the magic of it is that you just don't know what's going to happen. Right. If you just let it go and being like, well, I better be walking away with this thing or this better, this better work this way, letting go and relieving the pressure. Like we don't want to strangle we don't want to strangle opportunities. We want to be able to let go and allow it to breathe right. and to allow it to flourish and grow. So it can be really difficult to do that, especially if you're somebody who's never been married, if like in your forties and fifties and sixties, and maybe you're looking for that, you know, you've, you're, you've gone through a divorce and you're just been alone for a long time. It could be really hard to have that perspective, but may that's why we do what we do, right. Is to help people get out of their head space and into their heart space. And I know it's a challenge, but if you can just flip that script within yourself and start rewriting your own story, there's so many opportunities and possibilities for you. Yeah. I uh, have a shy friend who uh, dates and I tell her it's okay to be shy and it's okay yes. to go out on the date, but just pretend that you're there just to meet a new friend. You know, there's That's no right. romantic pressure. Like, is this going to be the one? Am I going right. to end up with him? Like, who cares? You know, just That's right. have fun. Pretend he's just a new friend you're meeting. No different than when you're meeting me for coffee or lunch or dinner. Just right. meet a new friend and see where it takes you. So that mind shift for her has helped her because she's like, oh, okay. I'm just meeting a new person, a new friend. It's not like all this pressure of there has to be a connection or what am I going to no. think of him and just go and meet him and have fun and enjoy your dinner, order some great food, have some laughs, drink some wine, you know, That's right. that so yeah, I feel like, um, it's easy for matchmakers who are in relationships to preach to the people who should do this, should do that. But think back of when you were single or think back during your singlehood, like what are different things that you did that you regret or things that you're like, Oh, I'm so glad I did this. I'm going to, you know, share this exciting tip with other people. Um, I'll start some of the things that I regret that as a poor dater way back when was I would be on match.com and I would give out my number and then when the guy calls me, I would talk to him. I would not like his voice and then I wouldn't talk to him anymore. It's like, I didn't mm -hmm. even give him a chance. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, that was so dumb. I didn't like his voice because he sounded like a coworker of mine. And I didn't really like that coworker. Like I just had right. excuses of not meeting people. And I totally regret doing that now. It's like, what was I thinking? Was I just not ready to be dating, but yet... I was being one of those annoying daters that I tell my clients not to be, you know, and I was ex exactly that. So there are things that I regret during my single days. And that's just giving people a chance and not be so judgmental about someone's voice or about the time of day they called me or what kind of car they drove or how they dressed or how their glasses looked, or if they wore glasses, you know, like all these dumb reasons that I projected on these dates that I now regret. Like if I was a really good dater now, if I was back in my twenties and I was dating, I would give guys three chances, you know, give them three chances. Like if I don't feel like giving him a kiss on the third date, then okay, it's not going to go anywhere. But I just feel like, man, if I was single again in my 20s I could totally do this a lot better 20s or 30s right so right um what are some things that you regret that you did when you were dating that you shouldn't have done oh my gosh how long do we have <laughs> <laughs> oh so much so so much yeah I 
my single, so I date, I got married right out of college. So I got married super young and then I was divorced like somewhat young. So I was, I had been with my ex-husband since I was 19. And then I was uh, 32, freshly divorced, raising two small children, trying to date. Uh, so I made a lot of mistakes and, um, one of them, when you're, when you're talking, one of them that comes to my mind, I was the classic, um, oversharer. So I, so it's really easy for me to be open and be vulnerable. It's like, I have no problems doing that. As you all can tell, I have no problems doing that. So what I would do is I would same thing. I would, um, meet someone online and then I would move it to my phone. And then I would start to form an attachment to this person without even before meeting them, yeah. like start to form, like romanticize this attachment with them where I would talk to them. I would text them in the morning and then we would have these long conversations at night. And it was to the point to where like, it's, I filled my calendar up with a couple of these different, like I would be talking to three, four, five, six men at a time. And then I would go to meet them. And I was like, oh, oh boy. Like, no, like, even though I've gotten to know them, like just seeing them, I was like, I, there's no connection here. And I just wasted so much of my time with yeah. this person. And just like you, I, after that first date, if I didn't feel any sense of connection, then I was like, okay, thanks. But I think we're better off as friends. And I probably just like you didn't give these men, um, more of my time and attention after that, but I'm grateful because it led me to my fiance now, but I, now I understand why they, they say that they did a study on this, where the more, you know, about somebody before you meet. And I think maybe Ginsburg actually talked about this at, in Cancun, the more, you know, about, about somebody before you meet the less mystery that's there. And so like, when you finally go to meet that person, the excitement's gone that you're really, it's the opposite. The less, you know, about the person before you meet the more mystery that's there, the more likely you're going to enjoy your date and more likely you're going to go on that second date. So when I, the more I keep learning, just like you were talking about, like I, as I'm like learning, it's like, it's like those people who become coaches so that they can coach themselves. Like both, both you and I are in successful relationships but I'm learning so much to where I'm like, oh my gosh, this was me. Like if I would have known this knowledge back when I was dating, I could have saved myself so much time, so much time and energy and heartache, honestly. So, so one of those back, things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry to cut you off. So looking back, no. do you think the goal is when you start texting back and forth a couple of times? you try to meet right away or do you want yes, to hop absolutely. on the phone first? Do you think that you should hop on a phone call first or just try to meet in person if you're in the same city? I think that hopping on a phone call for a short 10 minute conversation is good before okay. you meet. Okay. I think that's okay to listen to their voice. Um, I think it's okay to have that touch point, but I think long conversations really getting into these in-depth conversations, especially via text, absolute no. Right. Text should be, let's meet, um, you know, and no good morning, no good evening, none of that. It's more transactional through text right. where it's like, are you available this date? Like those kinds of interactions. And then you can call and have like a little bit of a conversation, but leave the rest to face to face, right. honestly, because one of the things that I teach my clients is that person is a complete stranger, by the way, number one, <laughs> number two, they have to, they have to earn that right to know more about you. Like they haven't earned it yet. Yeah. Don't be willing to just throw them everything because they haven't earned that right. So just ease into it and give them little by little by little. And it's, it's, it's harder for those that have anxious attachment because they want to get close to them super fast. They want to be able to share their life story so that they can be intimate and right away, but little by little, your story and what you've been through and who you are, you're extremely worthy and valuable to just let a stranger come in and you tell them everything is 
to me, it's, they haven't earned that right. So just to look at it that way is like a, a currency, almost like let them show up and right. then you can share that information. Yeah. Uh, one last question. You yeah. said that you're in a relationship. Yeah. Uh, so am I, do you believe that to be an effective date coach or a matchmaker, you should be in a relationship Are mm -hmm. married matchmakers or in a relationship matchmakers more effective because they see that side of it? Like, what are your thoughts? I I'm going to be honest with you. I'm conflicted because I don't. So I got, I got this advice from, I got this advice. I had a business coach who I hired, um, back in 2018, 2019. And she said, you don't ever want to coach someone on the problem that you currently have in your own life. So if your issue is that you're looking for romance for yourself, you really should not be coaching others with the same problem that you should overcome whatever it is. Cause in the coaching world, they always say that you should be coaching yourself from five years ago. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I understand that way of thinking and that mindset. However, I've met some pretty incredible people who are doing this work, who are not attached, who are making an impact. Mm -hmm. So it's really like, not to be like, so in like gray about it, but it's, I think it depends on who the matchmaker is and who the person is and what value that they can provide. If you feel like going to this matchmaker and they haven't, and they're not in a relationship, but you feel that their advice and what they offer you is valuable, then go for it. Right. So I, I'm kind of, I can see both sides of the coin. Honestly, what do you, what are your thoughts on it? Well, I always feel like I tell my clients, my day coaching clients and my matchmaking clients that if they're going to get dating advice, they should get it from someone who's in a relationship or someone who's married, because I feel like their single friends just want them to stay single so they can continue to go out together and be single together and do single stuff together. That's right. So That's right. I always say, if you're going to get dating advice, get it from someone who's been married, someone who's happy in a relationship someone who you can uh, go to as a love mentor. So yeah. that's what I say um, as far as being a matchmaker goes. I feel like I'm a great matchmaker because I'm trying to find somebody, their spouse, and while they're dating, I could give them advice on, well, what you're nitpicking about is actually not very important 10, 15 right. uh, years down the road. So why, why is that even important to you? So I feel like I can give advice right. to somebody because I'm married and I'm in, you know, I've been with my uh, husband for 15 years total. So I feel like the advice is different. Um, I feel like if there's a matchmaker out there who is single, um, it depends, like, did they recently get out of right. a marriage or have they never been married, but they're helping other people find um, spouses and what advice are they giving and is it good advice? So I feel like if someone's going to hire a matchmaker, they need to find a matchmaker who kind of mimics uh, what they want, right? Like if they want, yeah. to get, they should find a matchmaker who's married. If they want online dating um, tips, they should find somebody who's great doing online dating. So maybe it is a single matchmaker as far as that goes. Um, so yeah, I just, I didn't know what people's thoughts were on that. So I thought I would ask you. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's, and I think it's like, it's just like when you hire a personal trainer, right? So are you going to hire a personal trainer who's fit and like yes. does their own regimen? right? Or are you going to hire a personal trainer who doesn't, who isn't a reflection of what you want in your own life, right? So it's to that point, like it's, I feel like, again, it can be really difficult to coach someone on a problem that you currently already exist, that already exists in your life and you have not solved yet. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, that's very good. We will wrap it up with that question. Thank you, yeah. Kat, for Thank you. coming on the show today and sharing your stories, your experience, and how would people find you if they're looking to work with you? Yeah. So I am, you can find me on Instagram or uh, Facebook at Kat Cantrell. Um, I love making Instagram reels. So that's like, um, I love doing those. Those like, I have like little characters and stuff. It's super fun. Um, you can also find uh, information about my services at my website, which is theheartagency.com. And then also you can come and listen to my podcast, which is called Dear Matchmaker, which the lovely May is going to be on shortly. So I'm excited to release our interview that we've had. So you can find uh, me over there too. So take a listen. Yes. And all that will be in the show notes. And thank you so much, Kat. And I will see you later. And for the audience listening out there, single ladies, I would love for you to be in my database. Go to twoasianmatchmakers.com, fill out a profile with me. If there are single men out there who's looking to meet Asian women, contact me on that website. You can also call me at 310-867-0851. Like and subscribe so you'll get our latest podcast and see you soon. Bye, everybody.